Simon Michelle from FEG. Welcome live. Was that a justified move uh, in light of those utterances just summarised? Yeah, good afternoon, Carson. Mm. Well, look, I think it was uh, generally also driven by the drop in the oil price, uh, mm -hmm. reaching new levels as well, and the impact that that's likely to have on inflation. Um, mm. You know, the data is certainly moving the, in the opposite direction than where they'd like to see it. Um, and this builds into this uh, theme that, uh, you know, both growth and inflation are lowering, and that's being reflected by the US 10 year, for example, reaching 2.16% mm -hmm. uh, overnight. So, new levels there. <clears throat> Short term rates holding pretty, pretty strongly. I mean, the two years only three basis points lower than its peak this year. But you're seeing that flattening of the yield curve as the market discounts uh, the rate of mm. further rate hikes in the US. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, we're expecting it to come through and we're seeing it reflected in rates at the moment. Was it kind of a dead hawk bounce by Janet Yellen in June on reflection, do we think? Because, uh, I mean, to be talking even from Kaplan's perch about trimming the balance sheet sometime before the end of 2017, but, you know, for Evans to say, wait until later this year before raising rates, I mean, you're putting horse before the cart. Well, this is a problem, and I mean, it's going to be very difficult for them to do the both things at the same time. And I, I think that if they stick to that um, uh, calendar of starting to lower their balance sheet, it's really going to restrict the ability for them to continue to uh, increase rates. Mm. Um, you know, the market's discounting uh, a December rate increase now. It's pushing that out, starting to push that out into 2018. Mm -hmm. So then the question becomes, well, you know, if we push out the um, forecast for further rate increases, what impact is that likely to going to have on the mm -hmm. Fed that has been strongly messaging that they'd like to begin uh, mm. uh, dr uh, drifting that balance sheet level down. Um, you know, you're seeing that reflecting Fed members, which you mentioned at the top of the, mm. uh, the cross as well, where you, you know, spoke about uh, one of the Fed members there, you know, getting quite nervous. You've mm. also uh, had a couple come out and say, look, we're pretty happy with how the economy's looking. You can look through this weak inflation. We've got a strong labour market. That's likely to lead to inflation coming through. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think that's looking a little bit of a, a tough argument at the moment, given the data we're seeing come through. Lines in the sand on the 10-year, rising by four points overnight to 2.16. Where does it get, as it were, too hot to handle? Well, it's interesting. I mean, it depends what the other rates do. I mean, we were talking only a couple of weeks ago about the margin between the Aussie 10-year uh, and the US 10-year. Now, the Aussie's at 2.4 at the moment. It's been at that level pretty much all month. I mean, it's pretty much just been moving in sideways fashion. Mm. But the US continues to move down. So that actually gives a little bit of uh, relief, I suppose, to some of the other central bankers uh, on what they need to do. Um, I think that if you have a look at growth and inflation uh, forecasts, if they continue to keep falling, we would expect to see those longer rates fall. Look at the US 30 year, it's down to 2.77. Uh, it's over half a percent lower than its peak in March. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's certainly not reflecting that long end uh, a view mm -hmm. that we're going to see higher uh, growth. So when you see those forecasts out there of around 3%, you know, I, I, I just don't see that in the near term. And the USD, meanwhile, what kind of a uh, signal point is that for you on optimism or otherwise of that 3%? The fact that it was fairly well supported overnight, don't just take one session's trade to make the point, but what are you seeing more broadly there? A push? It yeah, look, I mean, still very strong. I mean, if you have a look at the US equity markets compared to ours, for example, I mean, you know, you've, you've got two stories there as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're still seeing strong demand for US Treasuries. We're seeing that at auction. Strong demand for um, Treasury inflation protected securities as well. And that's being reflected in the strong dollar. Investors still very happy to lock in uh, these US yields at this level. So, you know, if you follow the market, the market's certainly uh, happy to buy at these levels. They certainly don't see a lot of uh, risk of these rates moving up quickly. Yeah. Uh, so you're not seeing any sort of a change in demand. Yeah, so maybe it was a dead hawk bounce from Janet. She can go back to uh, doing what she does best, and that's being uh, an, Uber, an Uber dove. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Carson. The new